If I brought up the early 2010s, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Do you think of this? Or this? Or that? I'll kill you! Maybe a crippling financial recession. Maybe a crippling emotional depression. If you said any of those, yeah, you'd be right. But there's also one thing. One thing everyone today kind of just forgets about this time period. The absolute obsession with zombies. I'm sorry, future historians. I'm here to officially jump the gun and deem the period between 2007 and 2013 as the zombie era. <laughs> 28 weeks later, Call of Duty Zombies, Left 4 Dead, Walking Dead, Plants vs. Zombies, Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare, Marvel Zombies, Zombie U, Zombieland, Pride and Prejudice, and Zombies, Last of Us, and most shocking of all for all you Gen Zers, Fortnite. Yeah, before the skins, and the concerts, and the dancing, this was a zombie survival game, unveiled smack dab in 2011. The metaphorical plague of the undead had arrived, and zombie media would consume Hollywood for at least five years. And we all knew zombies weren't real, and they could never happen. But at the same time, everyone you knew had a secret zombie plan, just in case the apocalypse truly came. Nobody ever imagined themselves being a part of the undead masses, everyone just wanted to be the badass survivor holding the shotgun. After a good half decade of this, the enjoyment of fighting the undead really wore off. I don't think that guy was a zombie. I know. The perfect murder. By 2013, everyone was getting sick of it. Walking Dead absolutely fumbled its second season, Zombie You existed, and now we were getting romantic comedies, like this one about a girl dating an undead corpse. The zombie genre had become oversaturated and was running on fumes. And World War Z finally decided to come out. World War Z is one of the most disappointing movies I've ever seen in my life. Not because I thought it was going to be good. Oh no, the behind the scenes mayhem was well known before it came to theaters. I went in already expecting to be disappointed, and I sure was. Because not only did they make zombies uninteresting, but somehow Brad Pitt too. How do you do that? World War Z was infamous in movie circles at the time for going over budget, over schedule, and entirely rewriting its ending multiple times. Hey guys, is this ending working? Let's reshoot it. You know, before that became standard practice. Its development was an absolute nightmare. Brad Pitt and the director just stopped talking to each other. They had to communicate through middlemen, and it 100% shows in the final product. To your average moviegoer, this was just the Brad Pitt zombie movie. The general consensus was that it was entertaining, if not a little stupid, and most people just went on their way. It even received an overall positive reception from both critics and the audience. How'd that happen? But for fans of the book, it was a different story. Literally, it was a different story. There is no similarity between the book and the movie other than both involving zombies and being titled World War Z. I really think the filmmakers bought the rights to the book just to use that name. It's a shame because the novel itself is one of the most interesting takes on the zombie genre. The 2006 novel written by Max Brooks is an anthology of survivors retelling their experience during the zombie war. Brooks imagines the zombie apocalypse not as some end of the world experience, but a cataclysmic global war between modern militaries and the undead. Most zombie stories are typically a band of survivors fighting against massive hordes, but in World War Z, there were actual battles. There were front lines. There are veterans from every country that fought in this generational conflict. And now after the zombie threat was neutralized, there is a distinct post-war world traumatized by the fighting. The zombie event is both the end of the old world, but also the beginning of a new one. Max Brooks is himself the main character of the novel, traveling around and documenting various people's thoughts. The book isn't written like it's fiction, it's written like it actually came from this world. So what about the movie? What is the movie World War Z actually about? Well, Brad Pitt is Jerry Lane, and the zombie apocalypse happens. He's gotta stop it. Brilliant.
When asked about the movie adaptation, Max Brooks actually didn't hate it. I was expecting to hate it, and I wanted to hate it, because it was so different from my book. And yet the fact that it was so different from my book made it easier to watch because I didn't watch my characters and my story get mangled. So I was just watching someone else's zombie movie, which was fun and intense. That's the best mentality to take with this movie. It's unfair to judge it in comparison to the novel, because these are just two different stories. They're not even in the same genre. I would have loved a slow anthology series involving a huge cast retelling the events of the war, but I also can recognize that that isn't for everyone. There is no way a proper World War Z adaptation would have went over well with the general audience. This would be perfect for streaming, but not for theaters. World War Z was meant to be a big action blockbuster involving zombies, and that's the way I'm going to judge it. With that said, it still isn't very good. World War Z isn't a bad movie because it's a bad adaptation. World War Z is a bad movie because it's a bad movie. There are plenty of dumb blockbusters that can be enjoyable if you turn your brain off, and this movie just really isn't one of them. I tried, trust me. I rewatched this and hoped that my negative impression from 2013 was just because I was a nerdy little fan of the book. And, uh, no, it's just not that good. It's not laughably terrible most of the time. It's just, well... Brad Pitt is Jerry Lane. He used to work for the UN, but he doesn't anymore. Now all he does is make waffles. His career to work at a waffle house is cut short, though, after a run-in with the police. Or should I say, a police ran over. Ha 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 ha! Chaos ensues like it's a New Orleans Mardi Gras, as thousands are mauled to death in the streets. Jerry and his family have to now make it out of the city alive, as law and order absolutely breaks down. After leaving the last Kmart on Earth, they get in invited to hide out with this nice Mexican family. The two families hold up before Jerry's ride arrives, and despite his pleas, the Mexican dad just decides to stay, for some reason. Why did you do that? Now safe and sound in the middle of the ocean, Jerry gets extorted into doing the UN's bidding, just as Alex Jones predicted. They have to figure out what is spreading and how to stop it, and Jerry is, of course, the only man for the job. Wait, what was this guy's previous job? Former United Nations investigator? So I guess he just investigates a way out of this. They have to head to South Korea to find Patient Zero. If they find out what happened with Patient Zero, perhaps they can create a cure and end all of this. Jerry goes with this very important UN doctor who can figure everything out. If we knew where this thing started, then we'd have a chance of developing a vaccine to stop it. So we're sending Dr. Fassbach there to look for the source. This UN doctor, surrounded by a bunch of zombies, in the middle of the rain, what do you think's gonna happen? <laughs> yeah, bet you didn't see that coming. With the doctor dead, Jerry's kind of at a dead end now, and there's really no point for him going to South Korea. So his next lead is Israel. Israel knew the zombie apocalypse was going to happen, and they told nobody. They did build a giant wall, though. They sealed off their entire country days before the undead attacked man. That wall, for the most part, has really helped out, until at least everyone got along. If I don't explain this, it's not gonna make any sense. So Israel has a safe zone, and they let everyone from both Palestine and Israel into the safe zone. Everyone now feels like they're safe from the zombie threat, and in celebration, they just decide to start getting along. The zombies hear the song, and then just absolutely lose their fucking minds. Look at them hightail it up that wall. I don't even think that's how human bodies work. These were zombies that were previously pretty docile, and then the moment the Israelis and Palestinians came together for the first time ever, the zombies jumped over the wall and killed everybody. Too loud, it's too loud. What did you mean by that, movie? Luckily, Jerry is able to get onto a plane that was conveniently taking off, because of course a plane would stop for two random people in this environment. Rumor number two was an absolute bust. 
Jerry, you're terrible at your job. It's okay though, because at least Jerry is safe from the zombie threat. These poor people, all these men, women, and children with their own stories, their own lives. It really is a tragedy that they just had to be on the plane that the protagonist was on. Surprise! Jerry read the script and realized that this was his next stop, so he exploded the plane. With no survivors! Conveniently crash landing exactly where the vaccine people were. For the rest of the movie, he's just in one building, as they uncover how to find a cure and how to get zombies to avoid you. Apparently, if you're really sick and on the brink of death, they just don't even bother. So the way to stop a zombie from biting you is to get a fatal disease. Upon this revelation, Jerry immediately drinks a Pepsi. The man's unstoppable. The world is truly saved. The World War Z movie is just wasted potential. There are some really interesting set pieces in the first half, but halfway through everything just comes to a grinding halt. Or should I say a dramatic crash. Ha 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 ha! The finale is just so dull! And then it ends. The movie just could never deliver on its own premise. A zombie war. What do you picture when you think of a war? Battle lines. A back and forth struggle. This is a long drawn out fight. I know I said I wasn't going to compare it to the novel, but... The Battle of Yonkers is still the main thing most people remember about the book. Go on YouTube and you'll find fan cams and machinimas reenacting it. But why? Well, it's probably because it was a fully fledged battle in the books. With troops. Fighting against zombies. If you didn't know where Yonkers was, it's right there. In the book, Yonkers was chosen by the military to be the first line of defense to contain the spread. It'd be an easy victory against the zombies. They'd even invite the press to show an efficient government response. And, uh, <laughs> that didn't happen at all. The battle started off well enough. A few zombies here or there, but you know how zombies are. And soon there were thousands coming down upon some just poorly defended troops. Really shoddy tactics, I've gotta say. The whole thing ended up being a complete disaster. Reporters were eight alive, soldiers panicked, but for at least a little bit, the army actually fought back. Part of what contributed to the tension in the Yonkers chapter was the slow burn. It was a classic battle of attrition. Somehow these thousands of slow-moving idiots overran a well-organized military response. You can wonder just how efficient actual zombies would be against the modern military. But my point here is that there was an ebb and flow to this conflict. These were large military operations with front lines against the undead. Hey, hey that's, that's the, the name, name of the, of the show. show. Yeah, yeah, you get it. You know what we get in the movie? Zombie tidal wave. We Fast zombies are certainly more scary in how aggressive they are. And it makes a lot more sense in how they can overrun people with guns. But it also really takes the whole war part out of the equation, doesn't it? Most of this movie doesn't feel like a war. It feels like a standard zombie survival film. Rarely does anybody actually fight back against the Horde, at least effectively. And I'm gonna assume that this is all thanks to the script rewrites. Apparently, the original finale was meant to take place during a battle in Russia. They even mention Russia in the trailers. If you get into Russia, where would I start? Yet, for some reason, this ending was scrapped. So the closest we get to seeing this war is just two or three guys shooting into a zombie wave before getting swept up like this was the day after tomorrow. Other than that, whenever zombies are involved, our characters are either running from them or fighting in small squads. How is that much different from any other zombie movie? We didn't get an in-depth exploration of this war, nor the grand battles. Well, I can't be too unfair. They do show that there is a conflict around the world in an ending montage in the last two minutes, as sequel bait. Our war has just begun. <sighs> Movies, why are you like this? Where the fuck did this zombie come from? How did nobody hear it inside the bathroom the entire flight? Did some passenger turn inside the bathroom? I thought people changed into zombies in mere seconds, or at most 10 minutes. Same here? 
I have a 10 minutes. If 10 minutes is the absolute maximum, when did this guy become a zombie? It's not like a zombie just snuck in the first class. He had to have been bitten before he got onto the plane, but how could that have happened? To get on a plane, you'd need to be in an airport terminal, a terminal inside one of the most secure places on Earth. The only people that got on the plane in the first place were already in the terminal before the breach happened. So the only explanation I have is that somehow this guy was bitten inside the airport before the breach actually happened. And then once he was bitten, he calmly still boarded the plane, went into the bathroom, and then died. And the zombie was kind enough to stay inside the bathroom without making any noise, just long enough for the plane to leave Israel before pulling his whole surprise on the poor flight attendant. This one zombie created a situation where this absolutely safe plane was now a death machine. The plane just happened to crash outside of the one place in the world our main character really needed to be. How convenient. If this seems like sloppy writing, well, it's because it is. Like I said before, the script went through some drastic rewrites. In the original script, Jerry and the Israeli soldier were actually meant to take a safe flight to Russia. A remnant of this idea is still in the film, as the plane they board just happens to be from Belarus. Jerry and the girl would spend years fighting in Russia against the Horde, as Jerry struggles to get back in contact with his family. This idea sounds like it rocked. But who knows, maybe it just didn't pan out in execution or something. Apparently, when the rough edit was finally put together, nobody liked it, even Brad Pitt. So they brought in Damon Lindelof to make the whole ending less bleak and more optimistic. The ending to this movie is the worst part about it. You could turn World War Z off as the plane crashes and walk away positively entertained. Had they stuck to the grand battle at the end, I think it probably would have gone on a sequel. You can't have your climax involve less zombies than the other two-thirds of the film. Hell, I'd take the zombie wave over a bunch of people standing around in a boardroom. Not to mention, the whole cure solution itself is just... dumb. If they wanted to make a franchise out of this, and they did want to make a franchise out of this. Why did they figure out a way to beat the zombies in the last 10 minutes of the first movie? Not only is the audience bored from the finale, but humanity has such a powerful tool against the zombies now, we all know how the story is going to end. They just had to create the biological equivalent of a clapping monkey, and now everything will be fine. Maybe they intentionally wrote this ending knowing there was never going to be a sequel, because the rewrites had already cost the studio too much money. Nobody ever wanted to work on another one again. Might as well wrap it up with a nice little bow. Brad Pitt's not going to stick around forever. He's got a once upon a time in Hollywood to do, and bullet train. World War Z is not a great movie. In fact, it's kind of bad. It was, though, the final conclusion to a sensation that had swept the nation. The last hurrah of the zombie genre in the mainstream. So where are zombies today? Just like in the novel, they're still around, just not in the numbers they once were. Call of Duty still has a zombie mode with each release. Dead Island 2 just came out only took them forever. And Walking Dead ended after a million seasons, and nobody seemed to care. That didn't stop AMC from greenlighting a dozen spinoffs, though. Can't wait to see Carl in Hell. As for World War Z, the franchise never really went anywhere other than a game that came out and was actually pretty good. I wanted to talk about it, but I ran out of time. Oops. As for Max Brooks, he continues to be Mel Brooks's son. Yes, that Mel Brooks. You can't be sir, can't you see that that man is a nip? I know you World War Z fans. I know some of you were waiting for me to mention it. His dad made space balls. May the Schwartz be with you. Max continued writing novels after this. He went on to write Devolution, a story of a town that was cut off from the rest of the world after a volcano explosion, and then was surrounded by a clan of Bigfoot. Okay. Max also went on to write three Minecraft books. Washed up on a beach, the lone castaway looks around the shore. Where am I? Who am I? And why is everything made of blocks? <laughs> what am I doing? Who knows, maybe one day these Minecraft novels will be bought out by Hollywood and poorly adapted to the big screen, starring a famous actor. Huh.